Hello, and welcome to the introduction to the Zeiss reverse engineering software. In the first video, you will learn about the user interface. In the next video, you will learn how to import and export data and how you can select individual areas in your scan. After opening the software, you will begin on the start page. Here you have the option of starting a new project, opening an existing project, or direct access to your most recently used projects. We will now open an existing project to explain the user interface. You are now in the reverse engineering step. The navigation within the software is via the menu bar. In many commonly used Office software products, menu bar is at the top of the interface. Our navigation bar is on the far left. Here you can view and change the global settings and jump back to your project. To the right of this is our model explorer, which is used for organizing your data. Next to the model explorer is the action bar with stored functions. The large window is referred to as the 3D view. This is used to visualize your data. At the top, there is a toolbox where you can change your visualization settings. At the bottom of the 3D window, you will find the settings for the transparency and the cube for the standard views. First, we will start with the 3D view. Translate with the left mouse, rotate with the right, and zoom with the scroll wheel. Take advantage of the cube to display the objects in the standard or isometric views. At the top right is the toolbar. You can change the presentation of the CAD data, the STL data, and the point cloud here, among other things. Change the CAD data here. Change the STL view here. Change the point clouds here. There is also an information window where you can find the details about the actions carried out. The lower toolbar is used to set the transparency of the CAD data. There are three levels where that can be set for transparency. You have the option of displaying only a CAD element or all CAD elements transparency. You can also reset the transparency. Now we come to our model explorer. It is divided into three different categories. The categories create the element that you have loaded and or created. You can control the visibility of the elements by clicking the eye icon. When you open a category, you have access to its stored elements. You also have the option of renaming the elements or sorting them into groups within the model explorer. The elements can be renamed with a double click. With the right mouse button, you can create a group or move a selected element into a group. The selection behavior has been aligned with Microsoft Office programs. If you want to deselect an element, you need to press the Control key. If you want to select several elements, you can do this with the Control or Shift keys. Now we come to the action bar, which is located to the right of the model explorer. There are also several categories here. There are also subcategories within each category. When you open a subcategory, you have access to the stored functions. Each function can be set as a favorite by selecting the star. You can access the favorites when you right click in the 3D view. The search function. Functions can be searched for by using the magnifying glass symbol or the control F key combination. A text field for the search entry option. Search for the term by clicking on the desired function it opens automatically. Now we come to the help function. If you are in a function and need help, just press the F1 key. Help for the selected function opens immediately. The last area is the navigation bar. Here you can open the global settings for the software. You can change the language, the visualization, 
as well as other settings. If you want to exit the settings, click on the reverse engineering step in the navigation bar. That's it for the general introduction to the user interface. In the next video, you will learn more about data import, export, and how you can select individual areas in your scan.